Hi everybody, this is Ian and today we are discussing more about opening offices in Ukraine and your R&D centers here in Ukraine. Uh, and we are working through uh, a topic of the comparison of the cities, different cities in Ukraine, where you would like to open your uh, development office. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, basically, we uh, Ukraine is um, uh, is located on the eastern uh, side of Europe, uh, and uh, we've got key major cities where people tend to open offices. You probably know about the capital of Ukraine, which is Kiev. Um, let me write it down for you, um, so that we know it for sure. It's written. Yeah, that, that is one of the key destinations just because uh, it's the capital of Ukraine, it's also the largest city in Ukraine, so it's uh, relatively easy to open up the presence there. Uh, the job market is also pretty good, it's pretty liquid, there is a lot of resources, people are changing jobs frequently, there is a lot of different uh, you know, technology stacks presented in that city, so definitely recommend you to think of that too. Another large city is uh, called Kharkiv and again by the end of this video we'll walk through every of these cities, their pros and cons, their comfort indexes, the, the average salaries in those cities and stuff like that. Um, so stay tuned. Another was it's called Dnipro. Uh, near it is uh, a city called Zaporizhia, which we most probably will not cover today. Or I mean, do, do we have the statistics for Zaporizhia? No, we don't. Um, uh, there is a, a city called Lviv in the western part of Ukraine, and uh, the city where we currently are opening um, uh, offices and teams for our uh, clients, it's called Ivano Frankivsk. So just because we are based out here, we know the city pretty well. It's a smaller one, so it has its own um, advantages to it when it gets to the um, expenses, to the convenience, the logistics inside the city. But we operate throughout the entire Ukraine, so we will be able to open the office and hire the team for you in any of these cities, as well as many, many other small ones. Uh, Ukraine is divided into 24 regions, so it means that there is 24 regional centers with a population of approximately two to 300,000 people, uh, which are suitable for opening your office, right? Now, what's next? Let's go city by city, all right? I'll pull up my deck. Um, we've prepared the information in more details and we are going to cover, we are not covering Dnipro either today I can see, so let's start with, uh, with the city of Kiev. It's a city with approximately um, 3 million people, so let's put it like this, let's uh, write it down. We've got Kiev, we've got Lviv, we've got Kharkiv. And we've got Ivano Frankivsk. Um, for the simplicity, many people just call it Ivano Franco or just Franco. So it, it's also very close to San Francisco in terms of you know the origination of it. So the, the same roots of the of the words, pretty much. Um, right. So the population is going to be one of the key factors for us just to measure. Uh, the more of the liquidity you want right away, the more it will matter for you. Uh, the second factor is going to be, we will discuss the key universities in those cities. Then we are going to discuss the um, comfort level. Comfort level. And then, um, something about the logistics. So, 
you know, the tips that we can deliver to you in terms of how you get to those cities, how easy it is to travel from San Francisco, New York, or any other key major locations in the world to get to your offices in, in Ukraine. So Kyiv has, give or take, 3 million um, population. It has got, I would say, three key uh, technical universities, or universities that actually have technical departments. And um, these are the Kyiv National University, Kyiv National, Uh, there is the National University of Kiev Mohila Academy. People know it as Nayukma, so by Googling it, you'll be able to find it out. I love these two universities for being pretty innovative in terms of the educational approach to them. Uh, they have evolved a lot since uh, Ukraine has got uh, independence uh, almost 30 years ago. And a third, university that I think it's huge in terms of the technology and you know the kind of the school of the education um, it's Kiev uh, Polytechnic uh, Institute or KPI it's definitely a university but the, because it's a, it's a Polytech Institute so we all know what it is um, it keeps up to the best levels of polytechnical universities in the world and you know it releases dozens and dozens of thousands of uh, technical uh, specialists uh, in decades. So, you know, I would, I would give it very, very high uh, remarks. Now, the comfort level for the gear. Um, so, based on um, certain statistics, we've got a point of uh, 143 um, which is, um, we'll see in comparison, um, I can tell I've lived in Kyiv, uh, so certainly among its benefits, it, it's, the, it's the largest city in Ukraine, it has got the most um, businesses and services for people, if you have a family, uh, you can pretty much find any um, you know, anything that you need, uh, school, a kindergarten, um, restaurants, bars, after school activities for your kids, you can go swimming by the river, uh, you can go to the zoo, so a lot of activities that you can do for sure. Uh, its disadvantage is around uh, the, uh, the fact that it's very congested in terms of transportation situation, it's, it has a lot of traffic jams, and uh, um, even if if it's um, you might have a car or you can travel by a subway station, it's it's not very comfortable unless you live close to the downtown where your office is, or vice versa, your office is located in um, in one of the living districts, and then you are hiring the people from that living district, um, and that's. It's very close for them to get to work. That will be the key uh, factor for them in, in their um, decision process when they are accepting your job offer. You definitely will be able to save some time for them. Uh, you will be able to, you know, you want the same salary, their factor, like their, their openness to all to accept your job offer will be higher just because they will be saying, saving one, two hours per day on, on the commute. And from the logistics standpoint, it's it's a definitely AA in our rating, just because um, the Kyiv uh, airport is the largest in Ukraine, and it obviously accepts all of the international um, traffic in, so uh, it will be uh, the easiest for you to get there. And now Lviv. Uh, Lviv is located in the western part of Ukraine. Um, unlike Kiev, it has, um, you know, it, it resembles a, a, a Western Europe in terms of the architecture and lifestyle. Uh, there is a really beautiful downtown with a marketplace, which is very typical for a European city. Um, you, you'll find a lot of coffee shops, 
uh, uh, but it's also a great touristic uh, location. I was shooting another video about Lviv, uh, which you can find on our page or channel as well. Um, so you'll be able to see how it looks like. Um, and basically the, the story of Lviv is that approximately 20 years ago, the local, uh, like the city hall, the local government and large IT companies, who were definitely not, not large back then by the current standards, uh, but they were predominant, um, they all gathered and decided that there will be, uh, like IT will be one of the key industries and the, the, the whales of the economical development in the city, so tourism and IT. Um, they've started the IT cluster after that, and the city has started to uh, grow in terms of, um, you know, um, educating more and more people to get into the IT. Uh, the private sector uh, has supported the universities, uh, so there were a lot of collaboration between uh, the, uh, the, the, the private companies and uh, professors, uh, different programs that basically merge together the educational process and the post-educational curriculum and practical work. And by now, Viv, um, Viv is, is definitely a booming uh, city for IT. It has approximately, let's see what it is in terms of the population. It says 700,000, but I would say it has increased to definitely a bit over 1 million in population. So also quite liquid in terms of, um, in terms of the population. Uh, the key universities will be Lviv National University and Lviv Polytechnic University. Definitely, I would prioritize Polytechnical Institute uh, just because it's focused on technology more. Um, but these two are the, the key ones. Uh, Terry, do you want to make a break? No, yeah, well, okay. Yeah, okay. Because we could continue in, in the next video as well. Um, so in terms of the comfort index in Lviv, the statistics say it's 140. Uh, so it's a little bit below Kiev. Um, I would argue with that. It definitely depends a lot on your lifestyle. Um, I've lived in actually both cities. I've lived here, I've lived in Viv, I lived in Ivano from Kiev, so um, I can share my subjective opinions. I think Viv is subjectively much higher in terms of the comfort index and uh, people who come to live for the first time, they fall in love with it. Uh, people who have fallen in love with it uh, once, they will never forget it, so they, they will keep returning to leave for, uh, for the vacation and at any occasion. I try to do that as well, so whenever I'm called up you know, to speak at the conference at leave, I will for sure go, even though I, I'm not necessarily uh, you know, compensated every time for, for my uh, speaking. Um, so definitely, um, definitely a good city. Many people uh, also try to either open their next office in Lviv, if they already have one office in Ukraine, or they would relocate their office from uh, one city to another, so they would, they would move to Lviv. That especially happened when in 2014 uh, we, you know, we had a, a you know, we, we had an invasion from Russia in the eastern side of Ukraine and all the uh, situation was not looking good at all. Um, people moved from the eastern, uh, so from those eastern regions to to the western part. So people from here, uh, where the situation uh, happened, and you know that Crimea has been captured by uh, by Russia. So the people who were around here, they started to think about hmm, maybe we should. Um, you know, consider our and our employees' uh, security and give them better uh, terms for their life, for their families. So they, they moved their offices to the western cities in Ukraine. 
That's why I previously mentioned, although the statistics says it's about 800,000 in population, I think it's over a million. Now, logistics-wise, I would say it's um, it's the same as Kiev. It's definitely less of the flights going into Lviv, but you don't need the all, all the flights in the world, really. You need the flights that connect you from the key locations, and Lviv definitely um, serves that purpose. Uh, and I will probably make another video about how you uh, plan your an itinerary, your trip to Ukraine. So we'll talk more about how you can fly in, how you can fly out. Uh, I will not go over it in this video, so if you subscribe, you will definitely catch that video later. Um, Thank you. Um, it has approximately 1.5 million in population. Maybe it had declined a little bit uh, because of the uh, situation, uh, but uh, it has been one of the centers for technology in the entire uh, USSR back 30, 40, 50 years ago. So um, a lot of plants, a lot of engineering bureaus have been located in Kharkiv and it is very well known for its engineering talent. It's in the blood of the people who live in Kharkiv. I cannot, um, you know, break more about that. It's, it's just incredible. Those people, they have very uh, solution-oriented and methodical thinking, and I have a real pleasure working with them every time when I happen to. Um, so the, the key universities in Kharkiv, uh, there is the Kharkiv National University and Kharkiv Polytechnical Institute slash university. Sorry for calling it institute, guys. It indeed is a university, but we just used to call it that way. Um, now, in terms of the comfort level, it, it has the highest mark of 152. Unfortunately, I could not check it myself. I've been to Kharkiv only several times. And I know it's growing, so I definitely believe this is so. And we have some people working uh, at our companies in Kharkiv, and I know that they are enjoying their life a lot. Um, in terms of the logistics, I would say it's probably a B. Why? Because there will not be a lot of international flights directly into Kharkiv, although you you do have uh, you know quite a bit, uh, but mostly you will have the connections with Kiev if uh, through Kiev if you if you want to travel into Kharkiv, or for sure you can find some flights directly from abroad to Kharkiv. Again, we're gonna cover that in a separate video. And the last city we are covering today, and it's a typical um, one of those 24 regional centers, um, Ivan Frankivs or Franco, with uh, up to 300,000 population. It has um, it has two key universities that uh, where where the technical students graduate. One is the National Oil and Gas. University. Um, it has also been one of you know the really well-known universities in in the entire hemisphere. Even like we have a lot of international students from many many countries where oil and gas uh, resources are uh, of the important value to the uh, economy and the infrastructure of the country. Uh, so many African students, many students from Middle, Middle East, and uh, it creates a very good vibe and increases the standard of the university. It also, in, you know, creates a very good, um, diverse uh, culture, uh, which I find to be very cool. And the second university, it's called, it's National Pedagogic University. Um, so it pretty much is oriented on the 
um, you know, educating the, the, the future teachers and uh, professors. And they have a pretty good applied math and informatics uh, department, um, which we've, we've worked a lot of people graduated from there. The comfort level of um, Franco is, let's see, it's 132. And um, I would also argue that, so we would have to look deeper into how, you know, what criteria have been picked up for this. Um, but it has its very own, very good pros and cons. So about, about the pros, it's a very small town. It takes me 10 minutes really to get from my home to the office. I don't necessarily need to take the car. I don't even, you know, have to take a bike. I just, you know, get from point A to point B walking and that's very healthy. And it's also good for kids. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, post curriculum activities and my kids can pretty much run around the city from from one uh, activities to other to the other activities uh, with little to no involvement from my side so it's very very family friendly it's also a very inexpensive town so we are going to discuss or we are already discussing the uh, the um, rent situation in different cities and you can watch there uh, how you know affordable Franco is um, and this apparently is one of the key factors why people um, would open the office here in terms of the job market it definitely has its job market which is less volatile and less liquid so it will take you a bit longer to fill in the position but when you fill in the position it's going to be almost twice less expensive than in any of the larger cities and the, um, the churn rate is lower so the people who are usually tend to stay within one company for years they are not very susceptible to really changing their, their jobs to another company which is a great great uh, advantage in terms of the logistics it is, I would say, a good B minus uh, because there is only few um, flights going from and to Ivano Frankivsk itself. So usually you would have to fly either through Lviv, which is like 80 miles away. Well, I know if, if you are in Silicon Valley, it's pretty much a distance uh, between. Or I'll say Santa Cruz and San Francisco, so it's not a big deal. Um, but you still have to drive it or fly it or make it through Kiev. Um, that's about it about the key cities in Ukraine. So if if you were thinking of Dnipro, Zaporizhia, we should have mentioned Odessa too. Um, so they would be similar to Lviv and Kharkiv. So I would say one, two, three, four, there are like four large centers like this. There is one and only Kiev, and there is say up to 20 other cities that are like Ivan Frankivs, where you can open your R&D center. Um, you need any more details, do you have questions? Just let us know, shoot us a message, we are happy to help. Bye for now.